plant bacteriology so regarding net 2023 uh, what will be the probability questions that we can expect from bacteriology now we'll see so my name is anit shankar reddy and i am working as assistant professor in kazar best iu so starts with the morphology of uh, bacteria in bacteria mainly we can see like uh, uh, bacilli that is a rod shaped bacteria and when it comes to coca it's a uh, you know spherical shaped bacteria so uh, so if it is a monobacillus which means a single rod when it's a diplobacillus it's a rod shaped bacterium arranged in pairs and uh, streptobacillus means rod shaped bacterium uh, in a chain manner so when it comes to sing uh, cocci it is a spherical shaped or spiral sh uh, uh, spherical shaped bacteria so if it is a monococcus monococcus in the sense single bacterium now we can see the picture here monococcus means single bacterium diplo means diplo or di means two uh, a pair of two spherical bacteria we can see the picture here diplococcus diplococcus means a pair of two spherical bacteria tetracoccus a group of four spherical bacteria we can see tetra means four right so a group of four spherical bacteria will be uh, arranged like this so this is called tetrad tetra means four right so tetracoccus means a group of four spherical bacteria streptococcus streptococcus means a chain of spherical bacteria arranged in a row so we can see the example a chain of spherical bacteria arranged in a row that is called streptococcus and staphylococcus staphylococcus means uh, which are irregular in manner where the, you know the uh, bacteria are arranged in like a, a grape bunch right so if you see here it exactly look like a grape bunch so which are arranged in irregular manner that is called strepto sorry staphylococcus and when it comes to sarsina it is a cube of it now what we have seen is tetrad right so if if we see this in a three dimensional way four will be on back and another four will be again on front so it is called sarsina which means a coke i arranged in a cube of eight so in a cube uh, you know uh, back side and the front side it like it's like we can see it like a three dimensional right so like that uh, the coke will be arranged a cube of eight so coming to the different shapes of uh, bacteria so spherical shape or oval shape or coccoid shape uh, which is uh, uh, the example is uh, micrococcus and rod shaped bacterium or bacilli rod shaped bacterium otherwise called as uh, uh, bacilli bacterium i mean uh, bacilli which means normal itself for rod shaped in the sense bacilli it will come bacilli and cylindrical and straight rod so echerichia coli and bacillus are the best examples comma shaped or vibrio shaped vibrio and delobrio means you cannot you can also call it as delobrio because delobrio also look like comma shaped right so the next one is fluctuous rod cytophaga helical spirillum kidney shaped or corini form example is clavibacter uh, fusiform shape fusobacterium fus uh, fusiform is bidiform bacterium bidobacterium and the star shaped bacterium is anclomicrobium it is also important one i have seen this question uh, in many exams and dichotomously branched galionella bat shaped hypomicrobium coil shaped or spiral shaped spirochete and again coil shaped or spring shaped leptospira these are all the uh, different uh, uh, shapes of uh, bacteria sometimes we may can also expect questions from this so the next one is the type of uh, flagella which were uh, i mean you know, bacterial flagella can also called as a bacterial flagella so when it comes to flagella uh, in bacteria flagella is mainly uh, used as a locomotive organs or locomotion for mainly locomotion purpose so if you see the net question papers from 2007 2009 2000 and, uh, uh 141 2014 to all the net question papers at least there must be one question from this uh, type of flagella section so now we will see what all the different kinds of flagella will be there a trichus a means no trichus means hair a trichus means no flagella is present example is xylella so xylella we know very well that uh, pierce disease of uh, grape oil so which is caused by xylella fastidiosa it is a bacteria okay so pierce disease of grape vine which is caused by xylella fastidiosa the same xylella is an example of a trichus a trichus means a means no trichus means hair no hair like which means no flagella so no flagella is present example is xylella which causes pierce disease or pierce disease of grape vine which is caused by xylella fastidiosa i will tell you one more interesting fact, fact about this xylella fastidiosa that is uh, it is the first plant pathogenic bacterium i repeat plant pathogen not human pathogen or some other pathogens it is the first plant pathogenic bacterium to be completely genome sequenced 
so it was genome sequenced by uh, dean et al in 2000 with the help of a brazilian consortium so i think uh, the size will be around 2.68 mb i think so i'm not sure uh, maybe and uh, so when it comes to monotrichous or polar flagella mono means single trichous means hair or flagella which means a single flagellum is present at any one side of the bacteria for example xanthomonas you can see here a trichous means no flagella is present right so when it comes to monotrichous monotrichous uh, which means only one single flagellum is present at any one side maybe left side or maybe right side any one side only one flagella is present for the best example is xanthomonas when it comes to amphitrichous a single flagellum is present at both ends we can see here on the left side one flagellum is there and on another side one flagellum is there so amphitrichous means a single flagellum is present on both ends of the bacterium so for example pseudomonas species so when it comes to peritrichous peri means many uh, so which means the flagella is present all over the body we can see here the flagella is present all over the body right so the flagella is present all over the body best example is irvinia pantovia escherichia coli and clostridium but you guys remember irvinia it's a very 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 important one uh, this question uh, like uh, you can see any model question papers or maybe any 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 kind of entrance exam uh, this question i have seen in many exams so it might be very very important and lopotrichous so tufts of flagella to both folds so here uh, in lopotrichous a tufts tufts of flagella which means more than one number of flagella 3 4 example i am telling so tufts of flagella is present on both ends not one end at both both ends a tufts of flagella is present on both ends that is called lopotrichous best example is spirulina so when it comes to cephalotrichous a group of flagella at only one end whereas in lopotrichous the same tufts of flagella or group of flagella present in both ends so when it comes to cephalotrichous only tufts of flagella or group of flagella is present at only one end not both ends so if it is present in both ends it's called lopo lopo lopotrichous when it is present in only one side it is called uh, uh, cephalotrichous best example is pseudomonas fluorescens and one more thing cephalo means head cephalo means head you can also remember like this because of human contains only one head right so which means so hair will be there on the head only mainly mainly hair will be there by, we can expose it outside uh, by, uh, on the head only right so you can remember that which means cephalo means head head in head for only one side only we can uh, fit the hair so in the meantime when it comes to cephalotrichous in only one side only tufts of flagella is present you can consider this tuft of flagella is like a hair so that it can be uh, we can easily remember it right so the next one is uh, circumtracheal flagella or subpolar flagella so which means uh, flagella is present on uh, one side or both sides e example is uh, uh, agrobacterium uh, lateral side we can the ex uh, we can uh, clearly observe is a lateral flagella means the flagella will be there on lateral side okay so again uh, let me come one second because it's a very very important atrichous flagella example is xylella monotrichous or polar flagella xanthomonas amphitrichous pseudomonas peritrichous irvinia pantovia escherichia coli and clostridium are the examples so lopotrichous spirulina cephalotrichous pseudomonas fluorescens and circumtracheal or subflorar flagella example is agrobacterium so now we will see the most important thing the difference between gram positive and gram negative bacteria so before this uh, uh, you know uh, a scientist called christian gram uh, developed a technique called uh, uh, gram staining uh, in 1884 he developed gram staining mainly to differentiate between gram positive and gram negative bacteria so you just identify which bacteria is a gram positive or which bacteria is a gram negative so christian gram developed a gram staining technique to differentiate the uh, gram positive and gram negative bacteria now we will see what are the some common differences so in this differences we can expect at least one or two questions i will tell you what are all the questions that i have seen before so that uh, uh though we can we may expect or we can also expect some questions from this uh, gram positive and gram negative bacteria or maybe differences side so the first and foremost thing is uh, uh uh you know like uh, a composition cell wall composition so when you see the gram positive bacteria so gram positive bacterial cell wall is very thick when compared to gram negative bacteria because gram positive bacteria contains more amount of peptidoglycan the amount will be ranges from 85% around 80 to 85% 
gram in gram positive bacteria the cell wall is present is mucopeptide first of all we know very well that uh, fungal cell wall is made up of chitin or little amount of glucan bacterial cell wall is made up of peptidoglycan or mucopeptide so in the general plant pathology itself we have seen the cell wall compositions of uh, various kinds of plant pathogens like fungi uh, umycota uh, and bacteria and uh, other kinds of uh, uh, algae or maybe other kinds of uh, uh, plant pathogens so so uh, if you guys have uh, not watched the video just go through and uh, uh, see the video so that you guys know what are the different kinds of cell walls and their compositions like uh, uh, fungal cell wall as i said you fungal cell wall is made up of cell was uh, sorry a uh, chitin and uh, little amount of uh, glucan something like that so here when it comes to bacterial cell wall bacterial cell wall is composed of peptidoglycan or mucopeptide but when it comes to gram positive bacteria it it, 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 is, it is deposited more amount of uh, a more amount of peptidoglycans were uh, uh, deposited observed in gram positive bacteria that's why the gram positive bacterial cell wall is very thick when compared to gram negative cell wall so as i said you uh, bacterial cell wall is made up of peptidoglycan or mucopeptide right so when it comes to gram positive bacteria around 80 to 85% of uh, mucopeptides can be observed when it comes to gram positive bacteria 3 to 12% it's a very less then the remaining amount of uh, gram negative cell wall is uh, composed of uh, lipoproteins and lipopolysaccharides so the next one is the number of layers so when it comes to gram positive single layer even layer the, as i told you that uh, it is a very thick right it is a single and even layer when it comes to there are different kinds of layer like uh, uh, peptidoglycan layer or other layers can be seen it is like a uh, uh, double layer or uneven layer uh, gram negative so gram positive is single and even layer when it comes to gram negative double layer in uneven layer and the rigidity when it comes to rigidity gram positive is more rigid because of the thick amount of cell wall whereas gram negative is less rigid when compared to gram positive because of less amount of uh, peptidoglycan or mucopeptides though the thickness range is, uh, is 20 to 80 nanometer in gram positive uh when the thickness is uh, 80 to 10 uh, when the thickness uh, the thickness is just 80 to 10 nanometer when it comes to gram negative bacteria so this thickness is a bacterial cell wall that is peptidoglycan composition okay and uh, nature of cell wall uh, very thick uh, because of high uh, peptidoglycan it is a very thin because of less amount of uh, peptidoglycan so when it comes to the next one tecoic acid so tecoic acid is present in gram positive bacteria whereas tecoic acid is absent in gram negative bacteria it's a very 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 important tecoic acid is present in the questions we can see like this tecoic acid is present in gram positive bacteria gram negative bacteria gram positive bacteria tecoic acid is present when it comes to gram negative bacteria tecoic acid is absent or there will be no tecoic acid there is no tecoic acid because there is another uh, a detailed uh, observations or detailed structural uh, uh, you know uh, uh, stuff will be there when it comes to gram positive and gram negative bacteria we are planning to do in detail video about each and every single topic from the each and every single content so when we are doing in detail about the every single concept on that day that i will tell you how the tecoy composition will be like uh, why the gram positive bacteria contains tecoy acid and why not the gram negative bacteria and all those things uh, that i will tell you when we start uh, in detailed uh, uh, explanations so when it comes to the number of layers uh, homogeneous layer which means uh, uh, a multi layer homogeneous means multi layer because more number of layers will be there and uh, when it comes to cell wall type uh, the protoplast protoplast in the sense uh, the uh, completely lack cell wall or they are bounded by plasma membrane only completely lack cell wall membrane are uh, bounded by a membrane only so when it comes to gram negative bacteria spiroplast spiroplast means uh, cell wall is uh, damaged but not completely removed protoplast means is the completely removed cell wall or completely digested cell wall for your understanding simple understanding i am telling so protoplast means a completely digested cell wall when it comes to spiroplast the cell wall is damaged but completely not removed it is not completely removed but protoplast is completely removed cell wall okay so the rings it is also very very important what are the two kinds of rings that is present in uh, uh, gram positive bacteria is m and s rings are present in gram positive bacteria and when it comes to gram negative bacteria four rings are present l p m 
and yes rings are present so if you see the bacterial flagella so this is originated from the inner cytoplasm and all those things like uh, uh, the rings will be like this so that i will tell you when we start a detailed explanation on about all those things so this four rings when government comes to gram positive bacteria only two rings are present m and s rings so when it comes to gram negative bacteria four rings are present m s l and p extra two rings are present l and p l p m s rings are present in gram negative bacteria that is four rings are present in gram negative so when it comes to gram positive two rings are present only two that is m and s so polar flagella when it comes to polar flagella it is usually absent in gram positive uh, when it comes to gram negative polar flagella is pre present and another important uh, thing is uh, staining color when we are staining so when when we are staining gram positive bacteria we can observe violet or purple color we can observe violet or purple color uh, 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 discolorations or purple color colorings in uh, gram positive stained cells when it compared to gram negative so when gram negative bacteria stained pink or red color uh, staining can be observed i repeat again violet or purple color staining can be the characteristic feature of gram positive when it is a gram negative it is a pink or red color because the, it, it is also the color exhibition is also mainly due to the composition of uh, this peptidoglycan layer and all those things so sensitive so back to the gram positive bacteria is sensitive to trimethyl uh, uh, tri sorry triphenyl methane dyes and penicillin also so gram positive bacteria is sensitive to penicillin as well as trimethyl uh, me, uh, sorry triphenyl methyl dyes so when it comes to gram negative bacteria uh, it is uh, sensitive to uh, streptocyclin but resistant to penicillin because the mode of action of penicillin destruct this uh, peptidoglycan layer if more peptidoglycan layer will be there it can easily destroy moreover the major composition as i told you the major composition is peptidoglycan right so it is a thick wall and the foremost layer uh, outer foremost layer i mean the leather uh, uh, apart from this uh, 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 outer membrane all those things the cell wall major composition of gram positive is peptidoglycan right so if the the mode of action of pencil in general i am telling so it destroy this cell wall like a peptidoglycan if more amount of peptidoglycan will be it will be easy very easy to pencil to destroy so when it comes to gram negative the peptidoglycan is very layer more over it is covered by uh, uh, lipoproteins and polysaccharides right so it will be difficult to pencil in to penetrate inside or destroy the cell wall so for instead of penicillin we can use streptomycin in gram negative so penicillin is very effective in gram positive but not negative that is the only reason because of peptidoglycan uh, uh, dip, um, amount so but uh, streptomycin is very effectively used against gram negative bacteria so the next one is toxins so the gram positive bacteria produce exotoxins whereas uh, gram negative primarily produce endotoxin and also known to produce exotoxins so lipids and lipoproteins and it ranges from gram positive ranges from 4.8 to 8.9 where it is when it compared to gram negative bacteria 13.2 percent can be seen in escherichia coli 27.7 percent can be seen in uh, uh, pneumonia and uh, coming to the ne ne important one amino acid involved so l lysine d glutamic acid l lysine and d alanine which are present in gram positive when it come to gram negative uh, alanine is replaced by dap alanine is replaced by dap means uh, diamino pimilic acid so don't get confused i will tell you so this uh, cell wall is uh, back as i told you this uh, peptidoglycan layer is composed of peptidoglycan right again this peptidoglycan is a subunits of nag and nam nag means n acetyl glucosamine nam means n acetyl muramic acid composed to form this uh, uh, this peptidoglycan layer so peptidoglycan layer is a very thick layer and again the peptidoglycan is composed of nag and nam constitute to form beta 1 comma 4 linkage so this links only where this was connected so each and everything was connected by some bonds or atoms right like this only this linkage like nag and nam is the uh, connection main connection uh, chief connection points so if you see the gram positive this nag and nam is connected by l alanine d glutamic acid l lysine and d alanine in gram positive when it comes to gram negative alanine is replaced by alanine is replaced by dap that is dipimilic acid dipimilic sorry diaminopimilic acid okay diaminopimilic acid that's it when it comes to example bacillus streptomyces clostridium 
and the kurini bacterium is also one example i will tell you how to remember this for example every student whoever me or everyone who are doing their mscs and phds they need to go through bsc right so bsc bsc agriculture so you can remember that bsc b stands for bacillus like here s stands for streptomycin c stands for clostridium and kurini bacteria you can remember like that so very few bacteria that comes under gram positive that is bacillus streptomyces clostridium bsc bsc agriculture you can remember that bsc agriculture bacillus streptomycin and clostridium that all are comes under gram positive so the remaining almost all plant pathogenic bacteria most of the plant pathogenic bacteria that comes under gram negative only for example pseudomonas xanthomonas salmonella these are all the various kinds of bacteria that comes under gram negative so again uh, let me go through quick once again so uh, 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 gram positive cell wall or gram negative cell wall so gram positive bacterial cell wall is composed of more amount of mycopeptide that is 80 to 85 percent when it comes to gram negative bacteria very less amount of mycopeptides are present the remaining is composed of lipoprotein and poly Saccharides. So, uh, one more important thing is tecoic acid. Tecoic acid is normally present in gram positive. I repeat, gram positive. Whereas tecoic acid is absent in gram negative. So, during staining, gram positive bacteria can produce violet or purple color. When it comes to gram negative, pink or red color. So, these are the some important things. So the next one is uh, Bergis manual of determinative bacterial was published in. So this question I have seen many areas in net also the question was asked uh, many times. So Bergis manual of determinative bacterial was published in the year of 1923. So when it comes to Bergis manual of systemic bacterial was published in 1984. There are many editions and volumes are there inside this Bergis manual of determinative bacteriology and the systemic bacteriology. So if it starts with the determinative D. So D comes first compared to S, right? So you can remember like this, determinative D. So if D comes first, the year is 1923. So S come after D only, right? So yes, if it is, is coming, 1984. We need to remember the years, nothing doing. So determinative bacteriology, 1923, whereas systemic bacteriology, 1984. This uh, bacteriology manual was uh, actually started by, this Bergius manual was actually started by David H. Berge. Uh, it is a non-profitable organization which mainly uh, you know like a classification of this bacteria and you know arrangement and all those things like new classes and everything will be included in this Bergis manual of determinative bacteriology so not only determinative bacteriology but also systemic bacteriology so determinative bacteriology was published in 1923 whereas systemic bacteriology was started to publish in 1984 so when it comes to the reproduction in uh, bacteria so we know very well we can't say reproduction rather than reproduction because there is no reproduction in bacteria i would say rather than reproduction i would say recombination recombination in bacteria so we will see what all the different kinds of recombination is there in bacteria first one is conjugation transformation and transduction so conjugation means we can see here where a pilus was developed by a donor bacterium and it was uh, connected to a recipient bacterium where uh, genetic material is exchanged from donor bacterium to rece recipient bacterium so after transferring of genetic material uh, even the recipient bacterium is, uh, is also start to behave like a donor bacteria very simple transfer of genetic material from one bacterium to another bacterium through pilus that is called conjugation so this conjugation was first reported in a bacteria called Escherichia coli that was first discovered by Lederberg and Tatum in the year of 1946. Everything is very very important here. Maybe organism or scientist involved even here is also very very important here. So when it comes to transformation, so the genetic material, so the bacteria which releases genetic material outside and it can taken by a special uh, receptors which are present in very few bacteria. The bacteria few having the receptors who have a cap capability of uh, absorbing the DNA which was really available in the environment. So if uh, uh, the genetic information is transferred like this, it is called transformation. Example, this uh, transformation technique was first observed in pneumonia. Uh, this was observed by Griffith in 1928. So the last one is transduction, very simple. It is also called as phase-mediated gene transfer, very simple. So bacteriophage was involved in this uh, 
transduction process for the transfer of genetic material so this was first observed in salmonella uh, was scientist who discovered is lederberg and zinder in the year of 1952 so let me come once again conjugation transformation transduction conjugation was observed in escherichia coli observed by lederberg and tatum in the year of 1946 and the second one is uh, transformation pneumonia griffith 1928 then it comes to transduction salmonella lederberg and 1952 these are all the an an order so we can get exact answers right and the next one is uh, bacteriocins uh, that is produced by different uh, uh, organisms now we'll see so escherichia coli uh, which is produced a bacteriocin called colicins irvinia keratovora pathovora keratovora produces a bacteriocin called keratovorin basilus subtilis subtilis sin and it also produces various other kinds of bacteriocin also uh, but the important one is subtilis sin subtilis sin and pseudomonas aeruginosa uh, pyosin and agrobacterium radiobacter produces two different kinds of bacteriocin that is agrosin k84 the trade name is galtrol and k1026 it is also called as nogal so regarding this agrobacterium tumefaciens producing bacteriocins or by control agents agrosin k84 and k1026 we will discuss uh, in detail about these two in uh, by control agents in the field of by control agents so i think uh, that is the right place to discuss about so pseudomonas which is produces uh, a bacteriocin called pseudobacter so these are all the various kinds of bacteriocin that is produced by the uh, organisms so different type uh, types of uh, staining of bacteria so we have, what are all the different kinds of uh, stainings are available now we will see so simple staining so simple staining is normally used to uh, you know like uh, to see the morphology and arrangement of bacteria flagella staining used to arrange, uh, observe the bacterial flagella arrangement endospore staining used to identify the endospore present in a bacteria capsule staining uh, so to just for identification of a capsule or to differentiate from the cell wall and acid fast staining uh, that is used to uh, you know uh, distinguish bet- between the acid fast bacteria and non acid fast bacteria and uh, gaisma staining uh, sorry gamsa staining uh, used to strain the cats and some kind of uh, uh, you know like protozoa and uh, cytoplasmic uh, inoculum uh, sorry inclusion staining used to demonstrate uh, intracellular deposits like uh, starch um, i mean like glycogen food storage organs like polysaccharide so this kind of internal deposit so the cytoplasmic inclusion staining can be used to uh, for the identification so we'll see some general uh, regarding uh, you know general uh, uh, questions uh, regarding this gram staining so the most common modent uh, used in gram staining is tannic acid so tannic acid is the most commonly used modent so most of them having uh, doubts what is modent or something so now we'll see so what is modent it is a substance which is uh, uh, now forms insoluble compounds uh, uh, with the stain and serves to fix the color of a bacterial cell very simple it is used to fix the color of a bacterial cell so that is a modern so the primary strain used in gram staining is crystal violet so very very important so from this we may expect uh, at least one or two questions i will tell you uh, so i have seen one or two questions in previous exams i will tell you so primary strain used in uh, gram staining is crystal violet 1% crystal violet can be used and when it comes to staining agent in simple staining that is methylene blue trapping agent or modent uh, uh, used in uh, gram staining is iodine solution that is a normally modent uh, uh, trapping agent and decolorizing agent is alcohol 90% 95% alcohol and counter stain used in gram staining is saffron so when it comes to this one uh, uh, staining simple staining agent uh, something like the methylene blue and especially the saffron in four five times i have seen this question so counter stain best example uh, the uh, i mean uh, uh, like you know uh, what is the counter stain used in gram staining something like that equations would have the best example is saffron in so saffron is the best example that can be uh, recommended or used in counter staining of gram staining technique so and we'll see the what are the pigments that is produced by the plant pathogenic bacteria so burkholderi glue may produce a taxoflavin this is a pigment i think uh, uh, this question already asked in 2021 uh, we already published the 2021 net question paper uh, so in that question paper they asked this question taxoflavin is the pigment that is expressly produced by burkholderi glue may and uh, cartobacterium flaccum fasciens uh, pathover poinsettia produces a pigment called keratinoid clavibacterium michiganensis subspecies michiganensis produces a ca- uh, color pigment called keratinoid and on the right side i have also uh, given the color of the pigment yellow color or water soluble pigment or water non soluble pigment or something like that i have seen on the right side also 
ఇర్వినియా హెర్బికోలా ఇర్వినియా ఉర్డోవరా విచ్ ప్రొడ్యూసెస్ జియాంతనైన్ బీటా డైగ్లూకోసైడ్ విచ్ ఈస్ ఏ ఎల్లో కలర్ కెరోటనైడ్ అండ్ ఇర్వినియా క్రైసాంతమి ప్రొడ్యూస్ ఇండిగోడైన్ ఇట్స్ అ వెరీ వెరీ ఇంపార్టెంట్ ఇండిగోడైన్ ఈస్ ప్రొడ్యూస్డ్ బై ఇర్వినియా క్రైసాంతమి ఇర్వినియా రెఫాన్సిటీ ప్రొడ్యూసెస్ ప్రొఫెరస్ అమైన్ ప్రొఫెరస్ అమైన్ అండ్ ఇర్వినియా రూబ్రి ఫ్యాషియన్స్ విచ్ ప్రొడ్యూస్ రిబ్రి ఫ్యాషన్ అండ్ సుడోమోనస్ ఫ్లోరసెన్స్ పెత అండ్ సుడోమోనస్ ఆరిజినోజా ప్రొడ్యూసెస్ ఏ పిగ్మెంట్ కాల్డ్ పయోవెరిడిన్ అండ్ జాంతోమోనస్ ప్రొడ్యూస్ జాంతోమోనిడిన్ సుడోమోనస్ ఆరిజినోన ప్రొడ్యూస్ పయోసైనిన్ సుడోమోనస్ సెపేసియా ప్రొడ్యూస్ ఫెనాజిన్స్ అండ్ సుడోమోనస్ ఆరిజినోజా ప్రొడ్యూసెస్ పయోరిబిన్ అండ్ పైమెలనిన్ దీస్ ఆర్ ఆల్ ద టూ కైండ్స్ ఆఫ్ పిగ్మెంట్స్ అండ్ దీస్ ఆర్ ఆల్ ద వేరియస్ కైండ్స్ ఆఫ్ పిగ్మెంట్స్ యూ మే ఎక్స్పెక్ట్ వన్ ఆర్ టూ క్వశ్చన్ సమ్ టైమ్స్ మేబీ సమ్ టైమ్స్ and when it comes to some important antibiotics which is produced by plant pathogenic bacteria and i will see what are the different kinds of antibiotics and before that sorry produced by only streptomyces not another kind another bacteria but only streptomyces because 80% of the bad, uh, uh, antibiotics that we are producing nowadays is are produced from only streptomyces around 70 to 80% of the industrial antibiotics also produced from only streptomyces species now we will see Uh, what are the different kinds so streptomycin and cyclohexamide which is produced by streptomyces griseus and these are also effective in some kind of uh, uh, disease like downy peas pernospora tabaci pedapthora infestans irvinia amylovara and uh, others and uh, chlorom phenicol is actually isolated from streptomyces venezuela neomycin is actually isolated from streptomyces friday cannamycin is actually isolated from uh, streptomyces cannamycin amphiteromycin is isolated from streptomyces nodosus oxy tetracycline is isolated from streptomyces uh, rimosus tetracycline is actually isolated from streptomyces griseus or streptomyces aureofaciens and blastocytin is produced from streptomyces uh, griseochromens chromigens and chloro uh, chlorotetracycline is isolated from streptomyces uh, aureofaciens cyclohexamide is isolated from streptomyces griseus nystatin is isolated from streptomyces nerosi hyamycin is isolated from streptomyces pimprina erythromycin is isolated from streptomyces erythreus uh, oleandromycin is isolated from streptomyces antibioticus carbomycin is isolated from streptomyces alstadi and uh, novobiosin novobiosin is isolated from streptomyces nevius vira a is isolated from streptomyces antibioticus vancomycin is isolated from streptomyces orientalis and casugamycin is isolated from streptomyces uh cause again so there are different kinds of uh, streptomycin antibiotic that is produced from the various uh, species so on the right side i have also given um, uh, against uh, uh, exploited against various kinds of other diseases so, so what are all the different kinds of diseases that can be managed by using this uh, antibiotics that i have given uh, here in the right side now the classification of important antibiotics uh, that is produced by the bacteria and their uh, mode of action i will see uh, so when it comes to beta lactams uh, that is uh, penicillium and cephalosporin comes under where penicillium species and cephalosporin species comes under so when it comes to the mode of action of penicillin and cephalosporin is cell wall breakage and inhibits murine synthesis so in previous slides we have seen the uh, difference between gram positive and gram negative bacteria that i told you that gram positive bacteria contains more amount of mucopeptides so penicillin is very effective against gram positive bacteria when it comes to gram negative bacteria streptomycin is very effective as i told you that uh, mode of action of penicillin right so here the cell wall breakage so it easily break the murine or it can easily synthesis the murine now we know very well that uh, gram positive bacteria contains almost 80 to 80, 85% of the uh, mu, uh, uh, murine or that is mucopeptides are uh, uh peptidoglycan so it will be very easy to uh, penicillin to break it and when it comes to the second one is uh, macrolides uh, uh, erythromycin and uh, carbomycin are comes under so erythromycin is isolated from uh, streptomycin hall study and uh, one more species that is streptomyces erythreus so the mode of action is uh, inhibits uh, 50s ribosome function and aminoglycosides uh, streptomycin neomycin and carnamycin are comes under so streptomycin is isolated from streptomyces griseus whereas carnamycin is new neomycin is isolated from streptomyces friday and carnamycin is isolated from uh, streptomyces carnamycetes so the mode of action is uh, inhibits uh, 30s ribosome function next one is uh, tetracyclines oxy tetracycline and uh, chloro tetracycline so oxy tetracycline is actually isolated from streptomyces rimosus and whereas chloro tetracycline is isolated from streptomyces aureofaciens so mode of action is inhibits 15s ribosome function and comes to polypeptides polymyxin b and basitracin so polymyxin isolated from bacillus uh, uh, polymyxa and uh, basitracin isolated from bacillus subtilis so mode of action of polymyxin b is destroy cytoplasm membrane 
whereas basic reason inhibits the murine biosynthesis and when it comes to the pollen group uh, chloromphenicol amphi uh, amphotericin nystatin areophangin and uh, uh under uh, you know uh, nastamycin some other fungicides are comes under so it normally inhibits 15s ribosome function so what we can expect here is uh, maybe especially group uh, or maybe like uh, penicillin is comes under group something like that we may expect and we can also like uh, seen like the source of uh, origin of their uh, antibiotic or something like that also we can expect and the mode of action is also very very important but uh, uh it's a little bit rare uh, to ask the mode of action of uh, antibiotics but when it comes to fungicides uh, most of the cases definitely they will ask the mode of action of fungicides or something like that so when it comes to uh, uh, this antibiotics we may expect the source and as well as their group maybe so the next one is a suitable media uh, for bacteria this is a very very important so when it comes to the suitable media so d1 medium so d1 medium is a selective medium for agrobacterium so now the agrobacterium is called as rhizobium radiobacter based on 16 sr rna so we know very well that uh, crown gall of apple rose and all the stone fruits is caused by agrobacterium tumefaciens now it is called as rhizobium radiobacter especially occurs in rosaceae family uh, we can uh, clearly observe that is apple and rose and d2 medium is a selective for corini bacterium now it is called as rathai bacter tritici so which is actually a kidney shaped bacterium and it is a gram positive bacterium also and d3 bacterium is recommended for irvinia d4 is for pseudomonas pd2 is for xylella fastidiosa so we discussed earlier that xylella fastidiosa which causes a pears disease a pears disease of grape vine which is the first plant pathogenic bacteria to be completely genome sequenced by a j g simpson in 2000 okay and this is actually transmitted by a glassy winged sharp shooter that is homolodisca coagulata now it is called as homolodisca vitripennis so not only this homolodisca species there are various other species also responsible when it comes to the california various other species of homolodisca and other species also responsible for the transmission of this uh, pears disease of grape vine so i think i already placed in a separate uh, 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 you know like a separate slide that i will uh, discuss when it comes so again i repeat d1 medium is specific for agrobacterium d2 is for corini bacterium d3 irvinia d4 pseudomonas pd2 is for xylella fastidiosa so other medias also there crystal violet uh, pectate medium for irvinia species uh, potato sucrose peptode agar for xanthomonas manitol glutamic uh, acid tetrazoleum chloride for pseudomonas solanaceae kings bee is for pseudomonas fluorescens uh arginine glycerol mineral salt is for actinomycetes nutrient agar for almost all bacteria uh, bc br vc pseudomonas fluorescens and uh, uh, lima bean agar is for uh, uh, pytophthora soja it's not bacteria but it's a fungi uh, sucrose peptone is for xanthomonas pseudomonas and ervinia melovara glycerol aspergin mesium is a septomycin and uh, c3gh spiroplasma uh, now one important thing that we need to discuss here is xylem inhibiting bacteria because uh, as i told you that xylella fastidiosa that is restricted to only xylem vessels okay that's why it's called as xylem inhibiting because this bacteria cannot seen anywhere else but only xylem vessels of any plant i mean not any plant i mean the infected plant uh xylem inhibiting bacteria for example is xylem xylella fastidiosa and clavi bacteria these two are xylem inhibiting where their infection can only confine to the xylem uh, xylem vessels of infected plants when it comes to the phloem inhabitant bacteria seresia marsens and candidatus liberibacter so it's a very very important that candidatus liberibacter asiaticus which causes citrus greening okay citrus greening is caused by candidatus liberibacter asiaticus so uh, when it comes to the seresia marsens it causes yellow vein disease of cucurbits so sometimes uh, we the questions will be like which of the following option is uh, which of the following bacteria is a xylem inhabiting bacteria options may be like xylella fastidiosa clavibacter or maybe seresia some other bacteria but xylella fastidiosa is strictly xylem inhabiting you can see here xylella xylem okay you can we can remember like that and phloem in the sense uh, when it comes to seresia marsens and uh, 
candidatus livery bacter so citrus greening is caused by we can also expect questions like this so citrus greening is caused by candidatus livery bacter asiaticus and uh, asiaticus we, we I mean, we can simply say it is candidates and liberty factor because Asiaticus can only be observed in Asia. And when it comes to other parts, maybe uh, some other subspecies or uh, varietal species may be observed. But when it comes to uh, Asia, candidates and liberty factor Asiaticus is responsible for citrus greening in Asia. Uh, now we will see the mode of entry of uh, plant pathogenic bacteria. It's a very, very important. We may definitely expect one or two questions, maybe and hydrothodes it's a very very important the pathogens which enters into the plant cell through hydrothodes is black rot of cabbage and bacterial leaf blight of rice these two pathogens are very very important that can enter into the plant cells through hydrothodes so black rot of cabbage is caused by xanthomonas campestris pathover campestris whereas bacterial leaf blight of rice is otherwise called as xanthomonas varize pathover varize these two pathogens enter into the plant cells through hydrothodes. So, regarding a bacterial leaf blight of rice, I would like to add one more point. Uh, so, this bacterial leaf blight of rice can be identified by using a ooze out test. Ooze out test, I think we already seen. So, in general plant pathology, so what are the different kinds of tests that can be used for the identification of uh, some important plant pathogens? So, let me come once again. So, back in ooze out test is uh, recommended or uh, especially uh, meant for uh, identification of uh, bacterial leaf blight of rice. And when it comes to the bacterial leaf blight, uh, you know, crescent stage or wilting stage is the most destructive stage or most important stage. Crescent stage is otherwise called as wilting stage. So when we see the bacterial leaf blight, we can see leaf blight phase, crescent phase or wilting phase or yellow leaf phase or three phases we can see. But among the three phases, crescent phase or wilting phase is a very, 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 very important and a destructive phase in bacterial leaf blight of rice. So we can expect questions like which of the following stages is most destructive stage in bacterial leaf blight of rice. Something like that we can expect. So that is crescent stage. So this bacterial leaf blight and black rot of cabbage can enter in the plant cell. So hydrothorsa. This, uh, though like black, uh, black, uh, black rot of cabbage can enter into the plant cell. This question I have seen in many places. So this is a very, very important one. The next one is the floral pots or nectar is uh, fire blight of apple and pear. That is which is caused by Irvinia amyrovora. Irvinia amyrovora. This is the first plant pathogenic bacteria that was reported and uh, that, I mean that was reported by T.J. Burrell. It is the first plant pathogenic bacteria to be reported to cause plant diseases. So when it comes to the next one, lenticels. So potato scab and uh, soft rot of vegetable. So potato scab is caused by streptomyces scabies, whereas soft rot of vegetables is caused by Irvinia keratovora. So these two enters into the plant cells through lenticels. Okay. When it comes to trichomes, bacterial canker of tomato, which uh, that can enter into the plant cells through tri trichomes. Uh, Clavibacter michiganensis subspecies michiganensis uh, is the causal organism. When it comes to stomata, bacterial leaf streak. Citrus canker, angular leaf spot of cotton, which is otherwise called as black arm of cotton or bacterial blight of cotton, common blight of beans and leaf spot of tomato. These are all are enters into the plant cells through stomata. It's a very, very important uh, bacterial leaf streak, citrus canker, angular leaf spot, common blight of beans, leaf uh, spot of tomato. So, causal organisms given on the right side. The next one is the general wounds. So soft rot of vegetables and stock rot of maize uh, that can enter into the plant cells through wounds. And the crown gall of stone fruits and penicillium also. Whereas uh, penicillium is not a bacteria, but still uh, for general understanding, uh, I just placed here. And when it comes to the insects, so when it comes to fungi and bacteria, very few diseases are transmitted through uh, insects. When it comes to plant viral diseases, it's a quite common because most of the plant pathogenic bacteria transmitted are spread from one plant to another plant through this insects only. Uh, but uh, but it's a little bit, uh, uh, you know, like uh, it's a very rare when it comes to the bacteria as well as fungi. So few plant pathogenic bacteria that can spread through insects. So now we will see bacterial wilt of corn. So which is caused by Pantovia stevarti. Before it's called as Irvinia stevarti. Now it is called as Pantovia stevarti. So the vector for bacterial wilt of corn is corn flea beetle. Corn flea beetle. The scientific name is Chitonema pulicaria or Chitonema pulicaria. The next one is bacterial wilt of cucumber which is caused by Irvinia trachyphila. So this can be transmitted by a vector called striped cucumber beetle. Striped cucumber beetle. The scientific name is Diabrotica vitata or Achylama vitata 
and another uh, vector is spotted cucumber beetle that is diobrotica duodecimpunctata these two are the vectors and the next one is root hairs root nodule and bacteria rhizobium and when it comes to the nematodes uh, wheat ear corkil uh, that is the rathai bacterial critici which enters into the plant cells through uh, uh, you know and normally enters into the plant cells uh, wheat ear corkil otherwise called as anguna critici and uh, uh, now let me come once again the pathogens which enters into the hydrothodes is black rat of cabbage lenticels potato common scab trichomes bacterial canker of tomato stomata bacterial leaf streak citrus canker and all those things are wounds uh, soft rot of vegetables insects so bacterial wilt of corn is transmitted by a vector is called corn flea beetle corn flea beetle chitonema pulicaria whereas bacterial wilt of cucumber is transmitted by two vectors striped cucumber beetle and spotted cucumber beetle so the scientific name of striped cucumber beetle is drabrotica vitata or acalama vitata vitatum now scientific name of uh, spotted cucumber beetle is drabrotica duodecimpunctata so now we'll see the ralstonia is uh, one of the uh, you know like a very dangerous uh, bacteria that can infect uh, mostly like uh, fruits and you know like uh, vegetables so so when it comes to the ralstonia solanaceae it is a very wide host range more than 200 species that can infect so ralstonia solanaceae was actually first discovered by a scientist called ralstones so in ralstone and solanaceae so far we have recorded five species all over the world five sorry five races not species okay five races it's a very 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 important so which race will affect which crop something like that uh, there might be a chance of asking so race one only infect solanaceae okay i repeat solanaceae solanaceae means there are many crops like potato uh, maybe tomato also i'm not sure maybe uh, yes, uh, tomato also comes under solanaceae and other all the solanaceae crop race one infect so race two infect musaceae musaceae means banana okay race three infect potato only potato okay race four infects ginger whereas race five infects mulberry so the questions will be like this so uh, ralstone and solanaceae are race three infects a potato b ginger c mulberry or uh, musaceae something like that they will ask okay a uh, race to infect most of the time i have seen this ralstone and solanaceae are race to infects musaceae or banana or musa paradise something like the scientific names for confusing us they will ask in a different way but race to infect musaceae race one solanaceae race three potato race four ginger race five mulberry so this is a uh, various races of ralstone and solanaceae are among their uh, uh, that can infect the various uh, uh, species so this is a very very important thing that i would like to tell uh, as i told you that the pierce disease of grape vine is caused by xylella fastidiosa that is the first plant pathogenic bacterium to be completely genome sequenced i told you right so and we also discussed earlier that is a xylem limited gram negative bacteria xylem limited which means the bacteria only con i mean confined to xylem vessels only so here not only pierce disease or pierce disease of grape vine but also other diseases which is caused by xylella fastidiosa only sorry fastidiosa not fastidious fastidiosa okay so that other diseases are citrus variegated chlorosis almond leaf scorch phony peach disease coffee leaf scorch alpha alpha dwarf olive quick decline oleander leaf scorch all these diseases are caused by xylella fastidiosa only i repeat once again pierce disease of grape vine citrus variegated chlorosis almond leaf scorch phony peach disease coffee leaf scorch alpha alpha dwarf olive quick decline oleander leaf scorch all the diseases are caused by a bacteria called xylella fastidiosa which is the first plant pathogenic bacterium to be completely genome sequenced and it is a xylem limited bacteria yes uh, when it comes to the first uh, yes we already discussed right Uh, so the first plant pathogenic bacteria to be complete, completely genome sequenced is xylella fastidiosa in 2000 with the help of a brazilian consortium or association the entire genome of the uh, uh, genome was sequenced by a scientist uh, called jjj simpson okay i think we already discussed it right so and i told you that pierce disease of grape vine is transmitted by glassy winged sharp shooter right homolodisca coagulata now it is called as homolodisca vitripennis not only this glassy winged sharp shooter but also other species like spittlebug that is uh, sarcopis uh, 
ulnareta and spittle bug is also called as frog hopper something like that and sharp shooters are belonging to the family that is as i told you that glassy winged sharp shooter is the vector for xylella right so this glass uh, uh, sharp shooters are belonging to the family cicadellidae cicadellidae okay and spittle bug belonging to the family cercopidae and you know one thing as i told you that not only this glassy winged sharp shooter other species also involved in the transmission of xylella right and let me tell you one important fact in california there are at least four important species of sharp shooter that is leaf hopper act as a vector in transmission of xylella that is the blue green leaf hopper that is graphocephala atropunctata and green uh, dracocephala minerva and red headed carniocephala fulgida fulgida and glassy winged homolodesca coagulata these are all the different kinds of leaf hopper species which are involved in the transmission of this uh, pierce disease of grape vine in california but generally this pierce disease of grape vine is transmitted by when various kinds of books we can generally see that uh, pierce disease of grape vine is transmitted by glassy winged sharp shooter that is homolodesca coagulata now it is called as homolodesca vitripennis so the gc content guanine and cytosin content uh, content of various bacteria and uh, this is also we may expect sometimes like uh, actinomyces contains 63 to 68 agrobacterium contains 59 63 clavibacter contains 65 75 and i think uh, uh, this is also one of uh, the bacteria which contains highest gc content and one more is there micrococcus luteus which contains 70.70 70 70, 75 points uh, 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 you know five sometimes they will ask what is the which of the following bacteria contains highest amount of g plus c uh, content something like that we may expect uh, dikia contains 57 ervinia 50 58 uh, uh, lifesonia 68 pseudomonas ralstonia bulk ordinaria 58 70 and pantovia 53 60 xanthomonas 63 69 xylella 52 uh, 55 prokaryotes 30 75 pseudomonas arginota 67 and uh, rhizobacteria melioli 61 uh, meliot meliolity 61.6 to 65.6 and uh, and various kinds of other bacteria is there but bacillus contains 42 to 43% as well as Shirishia coli contains 50 to uh, 51% so so when it comes to bacterial secretion systems uh, in bacteria uh, when it comes to plant pathogenic bacteria so there are seven to eight secretion system have been identified so far so now we will see so what we can expect from uh, uh, in our exams so type 1 so type 1 is like uh, that can be observed in almost all plant pathogenic bacteria they may ask uh, they will especially ask exam in exams like uh, uh, examples so uh, almost all plant pathogenic bacteria that is gram positive and gram negative comes under type 1 type 2 when it comes to type 2 xanth xanthomonas and ralstonia comes under so which is used to transport to multiple virulent factors it might be also one important i think so type 3 uh, specific cellular toxins can be export, exported uh, pseudomonas xanthomonas salmonella and vibrio uh, these are all our uh, gram negative bacteria that comes under <coughs> and type 4 uh, so it's a very very important one and uh, this is like you know uh, 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 direct type of uh, uh, they used to call it as a direct type of uh, 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 transport system or export system where the proteins are directly injected and agrobacterium tumefaciens is the example uh, so when it comes to the next one type 5 uh, type 5 secretion system can be observed in you know like uh, it is an universal transportation of all kind of protein molecules especially we can observe in xylella and xanthomonas so this is the type 5 is especially the universal transport of uh, uh, molecules so when it comes to the type 6 uh, we can observe in uh, uh, vibrio cholera pseudomonas arizinosa and pectobacterium and as well as xanthomonas also we can observe this uh, uh, type 6 secretion system this is mainly used in transportation of uh, dna and as well as uh, proteins and when it comes to the type 7 uh, secretion system it was actually observed in mycobacterium tuberculosis and as well as uh, uh, bacillus and streptomycin but when it comes to this uh, uh, the overall uh, uh, the uh, transportation mechanism was not clearly understood so far what we can expect is maybe examples like you know like a type 1 secretion system can be found in or maybe a type 3 secretion system can be found in or type 4 secretion system can be observed in agrobacterium tumor fashion such kind of questions we may expect in exams so this is uh, some important plant pathogenic bacteria and the scientist who involved in their discoveries like for example 
so if the scientist is uh, identifying or uh, discovering the first uh, uh, the particular bacterium for the first time so he will be named after that uh, bacteria like if it is agrobacterium that was first discovered by con in 1942 if you see in uh, uh, in in nomenclature also in bracket they can use the scientist name who discovered the a uh, bacteria or maybe fungi or maybe some other thing for the first time so now we will see the list of some important bacteria so i have given so many here uh, so you just uh, go through uh, for your convenience so i will tell you uh, some uh, important things that i have seen before important bacteria so agrobacterium is important that was first discovered by con in uh, 1942 and uh, bacillus bacillus is also very very important that was first identified by con in 1872 and clavibacter it is also important clavibacter was first identified by davis in 1984 and this was asked earlier and i think in 2019 i think this question was asked clostridium bacterium was first identified by or first discovered by uh, uh, prasmoski i don't know actually the pronunciation is right or not in 1880 and uh, ervinia ervinia is very very important winslow i have seen this before ervinia winslow 1920 uh, pseudomonas migula it is also important pseudomonas migula 1894 uh, and we can also expect uh, aspiroplasma uh, that is uh, davis et al 1972 and xanthomonas uh, dawson xanthomonas uh, dawson Uh, so these are all few important things other things also i have mentioned here you guys just uh, please grow through if i if i just read it out and it will be a little bit bored right so the important things that i mentioned here and we may also expect other kind of bacteria also and i have mentioned so many things here just uh, go through so different kinds of resting spores that is produced by uh, bacteria we will see what all the different kinds of uh, resting spores that bacteria can produce so when it comes to bacillus clostridium pyrosarcina and uh, sporolactobacillus and disulfomaculans and thermoactinomycetes which produce endospores endospores whereas methylotrophic bacteria that is methylococcus methylobacter methylomonas and uh, methylospora and rhodomicrobium uh, uh, venneri this produce exospore first of all we need to understand what is endospore and what is exospore so for endospore two definitions will be there it is a a uh, hard or heat resting spore that is especially produced by the few species of bacteria uh, like bacillus and clostridium it's a very very important like uh, in questions uh, in exam we can expect questions like this so uh, which of the following bacterial genus can produce endospores as a uh, resting spores or endospores uh, that is the bacillus and clostridium other species also i have mentioned here so two meanings will be there for uh, endospores endospores means the spores which are heat resistant spore that is produced by the bacteria like bacillus and clostridium during unfavorable or uh, during uh, uh, you know like adverse condition to survive for further whenever the favorable environment is will be back again the endospore can germinate uh, again endospore can give rise to a new bacteria so that is the capability so here the endo means inside so as the first meaning that i told you that is a heat resistant spore when it comes to the second meaning endo means inside we can see here endospore actually the endospore is produced inside the bacteria inside means endo if it is outside it is called ecto right or exo right so endospore means uh, inside the bacteria uh, uh, the spore which is produced inside so what are the bacteria that i told you exospore means uh, the spore which is produced outside the bacteria we can see here exospore the main difference between endospore and exospore endospore is the spore which is actually produced inside the bacteria whereas exospore means that is produced outside the bacteria actinomycetes produce conidia are exospores cyanobacterium that is blue green algae aconites uh, mixobacteria produce mixospores whereas azotobacteria produce cysts dello vibrio produces dello cyst so these are all the different kinds of resting spores that is produced by the bacteria so in exam we can expect uh, maybe giving some of uh, the bacterial name and uh, giving the options that uh, maybe azotobacteria produce which kind of spores uh, cysts or mixospores something like that we may expect in exams so this is uh, this slide is very very important now we will see uh, bacteria responsible for blue color production of milk here in in milk if you see milk so we can see sometimes maybe blue color uh, infection of uh, bacteria red color infection or green color some kind of various colors 
so now we will see what will be the reason behind this uh, uh, the production and all those things so the bacteria responsible for blue color pigment production in uh, milk is pseudomonas syncytia syncytia so the red color pigment is produced by serratia marsens whereas blue green color blue green color is produced by pseudomonas aeruginosa so whereas the uh, yellow color pigment is produced by yellow color uh, uh, pigment that can be observed by uh, the production of pseudomonas syncytia whereas the uh, brown color uh, uh, production in milk can be observed by uh, due to the pseudomonas putrefactions so i repeat once again blue color uh, pigment production in uh, uh, milk is due to pseudomonas syncytia if it is a red color it is caused by serratia marsens if it is a blue green color it is pseudomonas aeruginosa yellow color pseudomonas syncytia brown color pseudomonas putrefactions so i think uh, this slide we already discussed earlier bacterial wilt of corn which means uh, uh, what are all the vectors involved in the transmission of the disease right so the bacterial wilt of corn or stewart wilt of corn is is caused by stewart uh, irvinia stewarti or pantovia stewarti where this bacterial wilt of corn is transmitted by corn flea beetle corn flea beetle that is chitonema pulcaria and which actually survive in the midgut of insect okay and bacterial wilt of cucumber i think we already discussed in uh, you know like natural openings and again uh, uh, let me tell you once again so the bacterial wilt of cucumber is caused by irvinia trachyphila irvinia trachyphila actually this was first discovered by ef smith uh, we know very well that is ef smith is considered as father of plant bacteriology so we haven't started history yet right so let me finish all this uh, contents and uh, we can do a special video on history because in every year we can solidly expect 10 questions from the history very basic questions uh, they will ask so that we can have a, a detailed uh, uh, outlet of about history so that we can definitely uh, expect at least 10 questions so that's why i just uh, I passed the uh, you know history uh, uh, you know history presentation so let uh, let's uh, discuss about history at the end okay so this bacterial wilt of cucumber is caused by irvinia trachyphila and whereas it is transmitted by striped cucumber beetle that is acalyma vitata now it now it uh, before it is called as diabrotica vitata and one more species is also involved in the transmission that is spotted cucumber beetle that is caused that is transmitted by a diabrotica duodecimpunctata that is a spotted cucumber beetle scientific name so vector borne bacterial diseases so as i told you that most of the vectors are involved in the transmission of viral diseases uh, but fungi we can see very rare and bacteria also very rare but Uh, what are all the special bacteria what are all the different kinds of bacteria involved in uh, uh, that is transmitted by uh, vectors uh, we will see so peers disease or peers disease of grape vine that is zellula fastidiosa I, i told you that is transmitted by a vector called glassy winged sharp shooter the scientific name is homolodesca uh, coagulata now it is called as homolodesca vitri pennis and the second one is pecan bacterial leaf blight which is also caused by zellula fastidiosa and it is transmitted by spittle bug that is uh, Clostroptera acatina ac, uh, and one more species of uh, leaf hopper that is uh, Leperonia quadrangularis and next one is the citrus variegated chlorosis which is uh, caused by Zella fastidiosa and transmitted by sharp shooters or leaf hoppers or spittle bug homolodes cavitri pennis or uh, oncomtomina nigropectans and graphocephala octropunctata there are various kinds of species and uh, sumatra disease of clow which is caused by pseudomonas sizzi uh, transmitted by spittle bugs uh, Hindola striata and Hindola fulva and the bacterial wilt of corn uh, we already discussed before that is Pantovia stewarti Irvinia uh, transmitted by corn flea beetle Chitonema pulcaria and bacterial wilt of uh, cucumber Irvinia trachyphila caused by and is transmitted by spotted cucumber beetle that is Diabrotica vitata now it is called as Acalyma vitata and the next species is Diabrotica duodecimpunctata and black leg of uh, potato uh, which is caused by pectobacterium keratovorum and it is transmitted by seed corn maggot that is uh, hyalemina uh, silicru silicrurara and delia uh, platura actually it was uh, uh, you know like uh, it is a uh, vector scientific names right we were not that much good at entomology so that's why i'm sorry for that and uh, if there is any wrong pronunciation hope you guys can understand and the fire blight of apple which is caused by uh, ervinia uh, armila vara which is transmitted by ants honey bees pollen wasps you know like uh, uh, flies if its various uh, species are involved olive knot it is also very very important which is caused by pseudomonas sevastoni uh, 
vector involved is olive fruit fly that is uh, dacosolia and bacterial rot of apple uh, which is caused by pseudomonas uh, meloptera uh, transmitted by apple maggot and ring rot of potato clive bacterium michiganensis which is transmitted by colorado potato beetle and uh, uh, green peach aphid and scientific name is given here and citrus canker xanthomonas axonopodis pathovirus etri which is caused by transmitted by mostly it is transmitted by maybe uh, you know like uh, uh, water spillings especially in the rainy season so and uh, some of the vectors also in order like leaf miner that is uh, uh, pillow uh, sorry pillow sinistis and uh, citrella and other species are giving constant spiroplasma kunkele leaf hopper dalbulus medis citrus greening candidates liberty bacter species silits diabro uh, sorry diaphorina citri and uh, trizova er uh, erythrae and will top potato pseudomonas solnaris transmitted by nematodes that is globodera pallida and these are the various species uh, 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 various uh, bacterial diseases uh, which is transmitted by vectors so we may expect one or two especially that prc disease of grape wine and these two are very 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 important here i can see i have seen this in many areas that is bacterial wilt of corn and uh, bacterial wilt of cucumber so Her genome sequencing and their information. So uh, well, we have already seen in the general plant pathology various uh, uh, different kinds of uh, uh, pathogenic organisms like fungi, bacteria, and virus, and the first genome sequenced organisms and their sizes and all those things. In bacteria also, we will see some uh, uh, genome sequencing information because uh, uh, from past three four years, uh, uh, few few questions are repeatedly asking from this, especially genome sequencing. So first one is Pierce disease of grape wine. Uh, that is Xylella fastidiosa. This is the first plant pathogenic bacterium to be completely genome sequenced by A. J. G. Simpson uh, in 2000. The next one is bacterial wilt of tomato. That is Ralstonia solnaceae. That is uh, uh, genome sequenced by C. A. Brocher in 2001. And citrus canker Xanthomonas axonopodis pathovirus etri. And I have uh, uh, no idea who actually genome sequenced this. Please, uh, if you guys know, uh, just let me come to know by commenting on the comment box. So it was uh, sequenced in the 2002. Black rot of cabbage, Xanthomonas compestris, Pathovirus compestris. So it was actually sequenced by Anasir Anadas uh, uh, Anadiselva, 2002. And bacterial spec of tomato, Pseudomonas syringa, Pathovirus tomato. It was air collar, 2003. And so sugarcane rotten standing, Livesonia zali subspecies. Zali. It is a very important question here. Let me tell you about this. So in one net question, I think in 2019 they have asked questions like this: sugarcane rotten stunting is caused by. They have asked previous uh, pathogen that is Clavibacter zeli, subspecies zeli. Now the name change to Livesonia zeli, subspecies zeli. It is a very very important. They will ask questions like this: sugarcane rotten stunting is caused by Livesonia zeli, subspecies zeli. I think I have seen this question two times. Uh, It is one of the important one. Rice bacterial leaf blight. Then that one is what is it? Pathovirus what is it? So it was sequenced by BMB. I think this question was asked in 2019. I think I'm not sure. Uh, sequenced in 2005. Bacterial uh, rice bacterial leaf streak. So then that one is what is it? Pathovirus what is it? Cola, which was actually sequenced by Salzburg in 2006. So these are all the probability questions or maybe topics that we can expect. A few questions uh, uh, for net. so we also uh, we also do you know like uh, mcq questions after finishing all the contents so for further more information or career guidance related to genetics and as well as plant pathology so you guys can reach us at uh, www.geekyresearcher.com stay geeky stay tuned we are team geeky researchers